Hi everyone, this is a quick overview of Unravel Biosciences Rare Shift program. So at Unravel, we recognize that drug development has left behind rare disease patients. 300 million people worldwide live with rare disease, and of the over 10,000 identified rare diseases, the majority still lack treatments. And this is likely due to the extremely large amount of time and money that it takes to develop a drug. At Unravel, we like to compare therapeutics to skyscrapers since they take a similar amount of time and money to build. However, traditional drug development would be the equivalent of building 20 skyscrapers and expecting 19 of them to fall. So our engineered approach lets us build products far more efficiently than this. Our mission here at Unravel is to transform drug development by clinically de-risking new targets using existing drugs. We envision a world where all patients have access to safe and effective treatments, no matter how complex or unique their needs are. And of course, we value ethical and transparent drug development. We do have a bit of a novel business model here at Unravel. So Unravel Biosciences is a biotech company that's focused on novel drug discovery for high unmet need patient diseases. Our sustainable service arm is called the Rare Shift Service Platform, which is what I'm presenting to you today. It's rapid drug repurposing for rare, ultra rare, and undiagnosed disease patients anywhere in the world. This is a quick look at the overview of the Rare Shift process. So it begins in the patient's home with nasal swabs provided by us that we use to collect RNA samples from both the patient and then one same-sex healthy control. So that could be a parent or a sibling. There are two types of studies that we do, a personalized study, which requires eight swabs over 48 hours, and a population level study, which requires a single swab from each patient and healthy control. This home collection kit is very easy to use, especially post COVID since it's quite similar to a COVID test kit. However, I will comment on these nasal swabs a little bit more later on in the presentation since we do get a lot of questions about them. So once we've received these samples back from the patients, we send them to a vendor for RNA sequencing. And this RNA sequencing data is what we run through our BioNav computational platform. BioNav can take a patient's RNA profile and identify its unique features, which can then be compared to the control's RNA profile. Using this data, BioNav is able to identify treatment options and simulate the patient's response to these different treatments. What it generates is a list of drugs from those that would be the most beneficial to the patient to those that could potentially be harmful. We deliver this list back to the patient, and of course, we're willing to sit down and discuss it with any involved parties, such as physicians, medical boards, scientific advisors, etc. BioNav does this using a database of 40,000 existing molecules. So this includes drugs, vitamins, small molecules, supplements, etc. All of these molecules are available for purchasing. You can think of BioNav to be similar to Google Maps. Um, if the disease state is location A and the healthy or control state is location B, BioNav is creating a list of different ways to get from location A to location B using the drugs available. And then it also tells us how efficient each route is going to be. I want to quickly address why we choose to analyze RNA instead of DNA. DNA is static, whereas the expression of RNA is affected by a multitude of different components like diet, microbiome, medication. So to get the most accurate representation of disease state, we choose to analyze RNA. As promised, I want to comment a little bit more on our nasal swabs. They're very efficient at collecting data, and they capture over 57,000 coding and non-coding transcripts. We also get a lot of questions about neuronal genes, so our samples kit can obtain data from all 1,600 neuronal and synaptic genes, and they also thoroughly cover neuronal-related pathways as well. And of course, working in the rare disease space, one of the biggest advantages of our nasal swabs is that they really increase our accessibility. We can collect data from patients essentially anywhere that we're able to mail a package. So this is just a map of some of the places that we've been able to work with patients so far. I also want to talk about our in vivo platform. It's called the Squishyware Screening Platform. It's essentially a CRISPR edited tadpole that we use to validate the list of predicted drugs from BioNav. These are some of the metrics that we can get from Squishyware. As you can see, there are a lot of different metrics that we can get. So we can get physiological metrics such as circadian rhythm, pathological ones like seizure phenotypes. We can also look at social and behavioral patterns such as location preference, social interaction, and microbehaviors as well. So just to go over the objectives of our services, the first would be to generate primary RNA sequencing data for our patients. And the next would be to find potential treatments that could help inform the clinical care of the patient. And then of course, we also want to understand the patient population in order to accelerate the path to clinical trials. I wanna introduce you to two of the previous patients that we've worked with. On the left, you can see a male rep patient who was in palliative care when we met him. 
we used BioNav to identify a molecule called Verinostat for his treatment, which is actually typically an oncology drug. However, at a very low dose, he was able to see improved sleep quality, normalized blood metrics, and he regained some motor and cognitive function and awareness, which was a really great progression for this patient. And then on the right of the screen, you can see another patient that we've worked with. He's a male KMT2B dystonia patient who, at the time, had worsening symptoms. So using BioNav, we identified a molecule called Ravel68. And at a very low dose, in a very short amount of time, we were able to see normalized sleep in this patient, which was a great progression because previously he was not sleeping through most nights. He also recovered receptive speech capability and is now learning to communicate through sign language and continuing to improve. And this is a quick snapshot of our portfolio as of February 2025. We currently have over 40 programs and are continuing to grow. Currently, we're working towards three clinical trials, and we have six patients taking drugs off-label. So finally, I just wanted to go through each step of the rare shift process and run through what the purpose of each step is. So the first would be to define the disease state of our patients using their RNA sequencing data. The next is to predict therapeutic mechanisms, targets, and interventions using BioNav. And then finally, we validate these predictions using our in vivo model. And of course, we have a hope of having a greater impact of developing new therapeutics from these de-risked targets. And then the final thing I'd like to show you is how to access the pricing for these different services through the RareShift website. So once you're on the RareShift website, you just navigate to our services page. And from there, you can find our pricing under standard services. If you have any questions about RareShift or the RareShift process, please feel free to reach out to me, Michaela, or my colleague, Eleni. We are happy to help you. Just email us at contact at unravel.bio. Thank you for your interest in RareShift, and thank you so much for listening.